Suppose we have a segment, and we know the coordinates of its endpoints. We want to know the location of the segment's midpoint, that is, the point that divides the segment into two equal length pieces. Well, if we let m be that point, then what we're trying to find here is a formula for its two coordinates, x and y. And so to do that, I'm going to draw in two triangles. Right Now, notice that triangle ADB and triangle ACM are both similar to each other. And they both have a right angle, so they have, they have that corresponding pair. And they both share angle A here. So because they have two corresponding pairs of angles, the angle-angle similarity theorem, think back to your high school geometry class, says that those triangles uh, must be similar. Okay, now notice that this means um, that AM divided by AB is going to be the common ratio for the ratio of the sides, right? But we know because M is the midpoint, AB is twice as long as AM. That means that this ratio must be one half. So in particular, if we look at AC and AD, that ratio also has to be one half. But we can calculate these lengths because those are horizontal and vertical segments. AC is x minus x1, and AD is x2 minus x1. Now, if we take this equation and we solve it for x, which, remember, is what we're trying to find a formula for, then we get a formula for the x-coordinate in terms of the x-coordinates of the two endpoints. All right now, to get the y-coordinate, we can do the exact same thing starting with MC and BD. That ratio also has to be one half. And if we replace MC with Y minus Y1 and BD with Y2 minus Y1, you notice we get a very similar equation. And if we solve this for Y, we end up with, again, something very similar. So this is our formula, right? This is our, these are the formulas for the coordinates of the midpoint. And I tell you, this is really one of, one of, one of my favorite formulas, just because I think it's very intuitive, which makes it easy to remember. The x-coordinate of the midpoint is the average of the x-coordinates of the endpoints, and the y-coordinate of the midpoint is the average of the y-coordinates of the endpoints. So suppose we want to generalize this. Right? Again, we're, we're going to start with a segment, and we know its endpoints, x1, y1 and x2, y2. But this time, instead of finding something that's halfway from one endpoint to the other, I want to find one where, where the ratio, uh, instead of being one half, is r. And so for example, if r was one third, we'd be looking for a, a point that is one third of the way from one endpoint to the other. Or we can find this using really the exact same line of reasoning, only instead of the common ratio being one half, it's going to be r. Right, so we'll start uh, with two very similar equations. Right? Again, I just replaced the one half with r. And if, if we solve the left one for x, we'll start by multiplying through by that denominator, x2 minus x1. And that gives us uh, this equation, right? x minus x1 equals r times x2 minus x1. And then we'll just move the x1 over, and we get a formula for the x coordinate. Uh, you do the exact same process over on the other side for y, and you get again, a remarkably similar formula. Right? And I think this one is actually pretty intuitive to remember as well. Uh, x1 is the x-coordinate of the left-hand endpoint. Remember, x2 minus x1, that's the, the horizontal length of the segment. So we're going to take this ratio of the total length, add that to the left-hand endpoint, and you get the x-coordinate that we're looking for. You do the same thing over here. y2 minus y1, that's the vertical height of the line. If we take this ratio 
of the vertical height added to, again, the, the left-hand y-coordinate, we get the coordinate of the, uh, of the new point on the line that we're looking for. So in the next lecture, we're going to look at some examples of how we can prove geometric theorems, geometric statements, uh, using these new analytic tools that we've been coming up with. Uh, in, in the process, you're hopefully going to get an appreciation uh, for kind of the power of this approach. Um, when Descartes first came up with this several centuries ago, uh, he was able to use it in, in very short order to prove a geometry theorem uh, that had been puzzling people for centuries, that, that no one had been able to prove uh, using classical geometry techniques. So you, in the next lecture, we'll, we'll take a look at some of the ways you can do those kinds of proofs using our new methods.